What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here, Sam be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. This is going to be fun. There's going to be a whole lot of funness going on here. So, uh, what we're going to be going over today is called the Cold Steel 100 watt device with Ambitions Vapor and EH Pro. There's so much that I want to say in the matter of like a 10 second window that I have to kind of trickle out as we do this review. So basically the way that this works is each pro had done the cold steel 200 watt, which I thought was a very nice device, although very, very heavy. And it was very basic for what it was. However, it wasn't terrible. I didn't have any scratches, dings, dents, burrs, burrs, or cowboy boots. And then that was with the gentleman named Nebel, Nebel Weaver, Nebel Weaver, whatever. It's not a matter of me insulting his name. It's just, I can't remember how to say it. Regardless, what I found ironic is that the 200 watt device was also called the cold steel as well as this is called the cold steel. I also had found out recently that the cold steel or EH Pro, I should say, had contacted a bunch of other reviewers saying, listen, we have this new product coming out. We want to put your name on it. How do you feel about that? I didn't believe that when someone told me, because automatically that sounds too far-fetched, too templated as to what I'm always saying in a lot of my videos. But then I saw the email and I was like, my goodness, oh my, my. While I get it, as a business standpoint, you're trying to do something to promote your product that much more. The only problem I have with that is these companies have no boundaries. There is literally, I can't tell you how many emails that I get saying, oh, hey, and then it'll be a different font, a different text type, a different size, and then it'll, they'll, they'll just fill it in with Jay, or they'll fill it in with Bob or George. It doesn't matter. And then it's the rest of the email. Hey, we're doing a product. We wanted to know if you wanted to do a collaboration. It's a templated email. But I guess so was this. Of course, I never got that email because there would be a video just like this if there was. The way that I understand it is this was already made, like I said about the email. And then I guess they sent it out to Ambitions and he troubleshooted the, and I do those quotes very, very elegantly, the mod and said, hey, this is what could be better. Look, I'm not saying I have some kind of vendetta against ambitions. I'm, I'm not. I, I don't want people to take it that way, but listen, people are going to take it the way that they want to take it just because they like to read things out of context. I mean, there's plenty of people that are making videos out people that have no idea what the fuck you're talking about but in regards to ambitions it's not a vindictive sense it's just you're putting your name on things telling people you're creating things you're lying to the consumer do do i need to say more i mean i can continue to go you say that you've created the diesel rta but then you weren't happy with the way that the screws were but then you created it so why did you make a video on something you created if you weren't happy with it the way that it was the, i mean there's just so many questions but this apparently on the front of the box says ambitions vapor and eh pro cold steel oh shit the only the, the only thing you got to do is put your name on this. And why EH Pro is even bothering with you, I guess they're just slim pickings, you know, bottom of the barrel. This is going to be one of these tough situations where if I mention clone or if I mention something that this resembles, there's going to be the guy in the comments. That doesn't look like anything else on the market today. And then there's going to be the guy. Why didn't you mention that it looked like this? So, where do I go? Well, I give you my opinion, and that's where we're at. Whether or not people agree with me in the comments, I got this long fucking nose hair. He's talking like that. Look how long they are! You have some blonde hairs in your nose! Okay, come on, let's figure it out. It's just continually putting out shit that you have no affiliation with whatsoever. It's just how can I make that extra dollar on put my name on a product that I have absolutely nothing to do with. But of course, let me put that aside. So whenever we get new products in the store, and I knew that this was gonna sell, so I picked a bunch of these up. 
Bree takes out all the color configurations and take pictures of them. Now I'm going to show you one that she took a picture of and something that's terribly wrong with this device that would actually cause it to not work. And, but however, I'm also going to open up two brand new ones that are sealed because that's what I do in a review. Well, I don't know if I'll open up both. I'll probably just open up one, the silver one, probably. This is a stealthy device. It's a 21700, 2700, 18650, multiple different battery configurations for this type of tube box mod, so to speak. Proprietary chip, of course. There's also something I want to cover before we bring it down. DJ LSB, Basardo. Somebody that has an oscilloscope and very, very advanced stuff. Why is nobody talking about this chip? SX Mini on both this and this have the worst parasitic draws I've ever seen in my life. I don't know if they released firmware updates. Get this device, the SL Class. I'm sure you have one. Put a battery in it. Let that sit after using it. I whatever a week two weeks check out the drain of that battery it's gonna be like 0.5 volts inside of the battery why is he not fixing that it's going to be hard for anybody that uses these daily to see that type of drain but if it's doing that to a battery that means continually as this is off it's draining a battery i've discussed this in other videos and I guess Yehi just looks at me like, I don't give a shit. It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, now I put that on the table, so I'll see where we go from there. Anyway, let's go back to the review. Let me bring this down, show you everything inside of the box. Then we'll go over it, and I'll bring it back on top, and I'll let you know my final thoughts. On the cold steel, I, I want to say it's 120 watts. 100 watts? What is that supposed to be? A pair of scissors without the plastic? Oh. God, it's 120 watts, but it's called the Cold Steel 100 because I guess it doesn't quite have the same ring to it, whether you say Cold Steel 120 or Cold Steel 100. Basically, it's a derivative of the original 200 watt device. Let's flip it. So you see what I was saying in regards to BOD mod? I don't get what that's supposed to be. Like, that's the box, right? So maybe they're using that as like the letter B? I... IOD mod, horrible graphic logo. On the top, EH Pro, Ambitions, Vapor, and then Cold Steel, whatever mod. On the bottom, EH Pro. Then on the other side, you're gonna have your quick response code, scratch and sniff. This is going to be Matchstick Crayon, flavor and scented security code. Then again, the name of the mod right there and your social media icons. On the back side of the box, really nothing that is included. It's just really a caution box, so to speak. And then your icons on the bottom, all rights reserved by EH Pro, designed by EH Pro, made in China. Designed by EH Pro, made in China. Nothing like slapping your fucking name on something to get money. Open up a silver one too. We're gonna open up them both. Comes in a lovely flashlight type of configuration. Open that up. This is the black one. We're just going to leave that right there, right now. I'm going to go over this one shortly. This is the one that I was talking about at the beginning in regards to Brie opening up to take a picture of it so we can put it on the website. This is the actual silver one that I just opened up as well. So let's go ahead and open that up. Right off the jump, I can tell you that this little QC right here is absolutely irrelevant. You have a QC pass printed on the piece of paper that says, listen, we checked this over. No, you didn't. Nope. Nope. Purchase information, which is basically your warranty terms. Battery safety checklist, always a good thing. If your battery looks like any of these, just make sure you rewrap it again. If you also see some dings and dents inside the wrapper or on the wrapper where you can see the metal side exposed, it's always a good idea just to rip it off and then put a new wrapper on it. If you're not able to do that, you could always use like electrical tape or something else. And then you get a user manual for the box mount itself. Then you get this, which is literally the same type of thing that you would see with the flashlight. Not necessarily a bad thing. It's kind of like a belt loop case. You don't see these too often. And then this is the stainless steel configuration. The stainless steel looks a lot better than what the black does. But there's something that I have to show you on this black one. Again, you can see that there are no dings or dents anywhere on this. So it does appear to look pretty good. 
with one exception. On the bottom of this, when Brie was taking this apart to film things, pay attention to that contact right there. This was not working because this little piece was right here over that. If this was QC pass, how in the fuck is that there? Now, I get it. It's no problem. You just kind of pick it off or figure something out, move it on the side or... There we go. Nope. So there is some type of plastic... That is not coming off at all. Basically, this whole thing has got a piece of plastic over it. Like a protector screen on the terminal. Why would that be there? What the fuck? And you can see that where that little piece is that I was kind of ripping it apart. Right there. Actually, nope, it's right here. And that was over the contact. So if you buy this and you find out it's not working, it's because that little piece of plastic, why would you put that here? Can't see why that would be a thing. That makes me wonder is, you gotta be kidding me. You'll see even on the bottom, look at this shit. Why is this in here? What the fuck? Why would you put a scratch protector for your terminals? It can never be too safe. You, ne you never know. You, you, you might just scratch up the <laughs> You might <laughs> You might just scratch up the inside of your mod. God forbid. And there it is, Ambition's Vapor. Yeah, how cool, right? And then obviously on the silver one, same thing. Manufactured by EH Pro. Uh, let me also, well, I guess I'll save that for when I bring it on top, but uh, EH Pro is the same company that told me that these were not available, that these were not for sale. They were not out. The only person that was able to get this was Ambitions Vapor. Really? Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the stainless steel one. Does that have the same thing? That's got scratches all over it. Now, I just opened this. Yes, it does. What an awkward thing. To put, you saw the scratches that were on that. Wonder why that is. And then, of course, down. Oh, that's the adapter. I was nervous as shit. What is that? QC, yeah. Uh huh. You got you got metal flakes all on the outside of this. Metal flakes. You see that? See the reflection? <laughs> wow. You're looking on the outside of this, it has that brushed, has a very nice brush look to it. There, there isn't any scratches anywhere on this whatsoever. Aside from those, you know, natural scratches of it being brushed. That's one thing I have to give them. You have a micro USB configuration. Couple little dings there where the screw goes in just on that one little port yeah it's not it's not terrible first off there has been a lot of mods that have came out that are like this i do 100 percent agree with the assessment that they're very similar and almost to a point where okay this is going to be successful let's make our version like literally that's exactly what goes on through my mind I could tell you though that this is that much smaller. And as much as I do not enjoy when companies do this, especially a reviewer, like you see why it infuriates me, is because you are a reviewer. You are supposed to set the precedence, especially when it comes to designing something. That's not what you're doing by taking a design that's not yours. What I wanna show you though real quick is this right here has a battery in it. Cause this sits, you know, I always have mods that I just take off the top up here. It's got a battery in it, it's good to go. But check out what happens with SX series. I wonder if this happens with the top side carbon. Right there. Now, no jump cuts. I'm just gonna take this, bring this with me, take this battery right here, put it on the charger. Pop that off right here, put this battery in. Take a look at that. 1.10 volts charging. 
It doesn't matter what battery I use, every single time it will be exactly the same thing. That bothers me so much that a company with such an outstanding name and, you know, they've had their couple little jammies that were jacked up that were questionable at best, but this problem, I want to do a topside carbon review because that has an SX chip in it. 21700, a positive side first and then negative just like that. Screw it down. I could have swore I just saw some kind of LED light up right here. There it is. And then fire this up. One, two, three, four, five. Cold steel. And then there's your power. Very, very basic screen. Kind of the same type of deal that it was for the 200 watt jammy. Really nothing to go over here as far as configuration. One, two, three. And then you're at power, temp, curve, bypass, volt, and then back. And then hit power again. Then you can change the way that it hits. Just go ahead and leave that on normal. So it, it seems like a lot of exactly what is on the 200 watt is on this device. It's not terrible, to be honest with you. It's much lighter than what the SL class is. But I'm telling you, when they were making this, that's what they were thinking of, is how close can we resemble that? Because we know that people don't want to spend that kind of money on ESL class, so let's make a cheaper rendition. And this is exactly what the end result is. On the Obsidian Black, 25 millimeter goes right to the edge. However, everything I seem to put on top of this gives it a little bit of a lift. It doesn't exactly sit flush all the way on there, and I'm wondering why that is. See? There's that little bit of a of spacing no maybe it's my mind let's see no nope. you see it hmm. once again that is the cold steel 100 let's bring it on the top back on top with the cold steel 100 watt device by ambitions and eh pro or should i say just the eh pro with ambitions name on the top of it Oh, this is going to be tough. Okay, so 31 watts. I have no idea why I need to show this, but there are people that say, listen, if you're going to do a review on a vape product, whether it's a tank or a device, make sure you do vapor production. So here's the plug for vape. Okay, here's the deal. First off, let me tell you this. There's no difference in the chip and this versus the 200 watt. The only difference is, is that one is 120 watts, the other one is 200. Literally, that's it. All same functionality. So what we have to talk about is the frame of the mod. This is a tough one. Okay, so let's take the SL class. First off, the SL class, even now, if you could find one, they're not gonna be cheap, especially considering the price of this versus that are two very, very different spectrums. The SX Minis though, for a long, extensive amount of time, at least up till the SL class or even the dual battery jammy that has the spinner on the top. Oh my God, you wanna talk about a ridiculous ass device? Check that out right there. So there's that, but the whole SX series, all of Yihi, for whatever reason, has this ridiculous parasitic draw. No matter what you do, you cannot remove that. Unless, of course, they've released the firmware in the past six months that I haven't seen that changes that, but I've never even seen a video where they addressed it. And I'm not quite sure a lot of people would notice that, just because, well, the only way you would know is if it's sat on a shelf, and most people don't have mods sitting on shelves with batteries inside of them. They take the batteries out. I'm the more non-logical individual than a logic person. I know that this has nothing to do with the SX Mini SL class, but in a way they're kind of intertwined. The SL class can do everything that this can do. However, this can do more power, probably a little bit more efficiently than what that is, considering that that has a parasitic draw. And I'm not saying that to start any drama, it's just it is what it is. I don't know why EH Pro went with Ambitions Vapor, probably because that's the only person that was willing to take this on and slap their name on it. Maybe EH Pro was nervous that if they didn't attach a name to a device, something that I've said probably in a live video on and Inside the Minds, that everything has to be tied to a certain name in order for it to be successful. Maybe that's the mindset that they had. Maybe it's not, but why would you put his name on it if you already had this product? EH Pro is on somewhat of a good trip because that Kelpie RTA that I did a review on, I thoroughly enjoyed. The Cold Steel 200, while it was a little bit heavy for what it was, it was thin, it felt good, it didn't have any things dense or burrs. Same thing with it, while well, this did have that one burr by the screw. 
Huh, I don't want to say that this is a piece of shit, but the screen is very, very outdated as it was on the original 200. The QC is non-existent. You saw the QC on the one that had the plastic over it, right? Why are they putting screen protectors over the insulator? I would recommend this over the SL class, without a doubt, just because of the parasitic draw. Now, if you're going to use your SL class, if you pick one up all the time, then I'd recommend that over this, just because you're swapping out the batteries all the time. <sighs> For what you could buy two of these, you could buy one of the SL classes. If I had to rate this device on a zero to 10, I'm gonna put this in the five block. I would love to go higher, I would. I just myself cannot get past how much this resembles the SL class. I would go for, because I despise the fact that someone is just slapping their fucking name on something that other people take pride in designing or drawing up. And there's plenty of people out there that have legitimate designs that don't have the connections that he does. And their designs will never be seen. Their mods, their drippers, their tanks, it will just sit on a back burner. A great design will be wasted. I'm not trying to be Mr. Righteous. I'm just saying that's the way that it is. This guy put his fucking name on something you have nothing to do with. Nothing. Nothing. But that can't remove the fact that this is not a bad device. In my heart of hearts, I want to say don't buy it by the SL class. In the reality, in the grand scheme of things, I would recommend this over the SL class just because of the price point, it being machined fairly well, although questionable inside, If you have some way of removing laser etching, I think alcohol does it. That's, I don't even think that's laser etched. That might be just printed on the top. Sort of like how 3M is, yeah, that's just printed. You might actually be able to remove that with rubbing alcohol. So I'm gonna try something real quick. I know that you can remove a lot of things with rubbing alcohol. I'm gonna try to do something a little bit special here. I'm gonna try to remove his name off of this with rubbing alcohol. Basically clean my shit of his dirty ass name. No, but it, I can tell you 100% that that is printed on there. Rubbing alcohol will not work. I'm sure that there's something that you could put on something that's printed on metal to remove it. And if you can, then yes. I still recommend this even though his name is attached to it. I just... Maybe that's why I can't give it anything higher than a 5 is because there is some partially bias there. At least I can admit it. As far as negativity is concerned, the screen is outdated. You guys have no idea how hard it is for me to ignore the fact that his name is plastered on the side of that and me knowing that he has nothing to do with the design. Yet on the front of the box, it states that it's his name. So automatically people are going to think that he has something to do with this. Just rest assured that if you buy this, he is probably going to get, I'm going to say roughly anywhere between 50 cents to maybe... maybe a buck 25, roughly speaking. So even though you buy the device, he still gets money out of it. Hardest recommendation ever for me to give. I'm not gonna say I don't recommend it. I'm not gonna say that I do recommend it. I'm just gonna compare this to the SL class. And if you don't have the money to get that, and you're worried about draining batteries to where they can't even be repaired anymore or charged, Just gonna leave it right there. Nothing else left to say. And I've kept it real. How beautiful. Jay, exactly.